Welcome back to NFL football. It is Thursday morning. Every week, we're going to do a Thursday night football preview. The first kickoff of the season. I'm joined with Mr. Jamestein, Mr. Tony No Dimestein. Got the Detroit Lions going to Arrowhead to get stopped by the defending Super Bowl champions. The Lions at the Chiefs. Chiefs are five and a half point favorites right now. We've got a 52 and a half point over under. We're going to talk through the storylines of the game, some question marks, look at the fantasy relevant players, where we've got them ranked. We're going to go through our favorite underdog slips, the squares that we could throw down on an underdog, and then our game predictions, money line, spread, over unders, all that good sheesh. First game of the season. Let's cook. I'm so ready. <laughs> Let's, you don't look ready. You look like you're ready to. You're ready to fall asleep. I'm ready. Uh, that too. You got w- half hour for the rest of your life. All right. I'm, I'm Can you bring in. it? Can you bring it for 30? I'm dialed in. All right. Every Get your phone out. Dial in. Metaphorical. We're fucking dialed in. All right. Let's talk about some of the biggest storylines of the game. Obviously, the Chiefs are the defending Super Bowl champs. Tons of hype around the Detroit Lions this offseason, right? Like, they finished the season really strong last year. I think they went maybe 6-2 and two over their last eight. They're looking to get a playoff berth this year. Lions brought on some rookies, obviously. Drafted Sam Laporta early. Drafted Jameer Gibbs super duper early. They'll be without Jameson Williams, their first round pick from last year. Their defense was kind of atrocious last year, but their offense should be fun, you know, on paper. When I look at this game, I don't I don't think the hype around Detroit is gonna like match up to the Chiefs versus the Lions here. Like I I, I kind of feel like there's no way the Lions come in here into Arrowhead and take this game. No. Just my my overall was, thoughts here. I was kind of shocked the NFL picked this game to be the season. Opener. Like, the Chiefs have, like, the Dolphins, the Bengals, the Bills, the Chargers. I feel like any of those would have been a better season opener, but this is what it Do is. Do they always pick a def- uh, Super Bowl team, though? Yeah, 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 Typically, the winner defends, yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, I'm just surprised this is the team they picked to play the Chiefs. Oh, okay. To well, kick, I'm saying the Lions. Okay. That I makes think s- this is a classic situation where the NFL can throw any team in this matchup and will be – the most hype in the entire year to watch it. You think it's all downhill for, for the for the Lions after this? <laughs> Probably. Do you think this is a make or break game for them? Do you think this, this is a, a winner? Win game. This is a winner go home. <laughs> this game? is a must win much. game for the Lions. Already. I like. I, I kind of here's the thing though. Like Lions ran on a lot of momentum last year, right? Like they picked up some serious mojo at the end of last year. If they get fucking outed here, if they go into the Arrowhead and just walk right into a trap, like a little mouse trap, and get swatted, pretty deflating. Yeah. It's going to be de- deflating given all the hype they got this summer. I don't – and it's like everyone's in on them and, like, they're favored to win the division, but it's like all this hype, and they still weren't a playoff team. Like, they're right. still below 500. Jared Goff was the most efficient he ever was, and that still didn't get you to the playoffs. Are they – they're favored to win the division? I believe so. Yeah, right? they are. Yeah. I mean, Three? I don't know if it's a heavy favorite, but Yeah, yes. it feels it's, up for grabs to me between them, the Packers, and the Vikings. Yeah. I don't think there's any chance the Bears win it, to be, you know, quite honest with you, but they don't, they don't feel like they should be – heavy favorites you said they're not but like overall I, I, don't, I don't know if I would pencil them in to be a playoff team all right so the the biggest question I guess on the Detroit side of the ball is like I, I honestly I actually kind of want to jump into the injuries because I almost feel like that's kind of the storyline going into the game right now like Travis Kelsey hyper extended his knee a couple days ago there's a bone bruise there's some swelling we don't know we're filming this on Wednesday at 4 21 p.m. We'll hear more news about him probably tonight and then tomorrow. I'm sure he'll go through like pregame warmups and see how he feels about it. And maybe he goes. If Travis Kelsey's out, obviously that puts them in a little bit of flux. Now, as it stands, it feels like Chris Jones is probably out for this game, which is a huge fucking hit for the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Uh, Jerry Sneed will be playing, apparently less than 100%. Uh, Charles Amonahue, I don't even know how to say that, but he's another D end of theirs, suspended for the first six games. So they're down on their defensive line right now. On the Detroit Lions side of the ball, obviously Jameson Williams is out for the first six games. Emmanuel Mosley is still recovering from an ACL. Jeff Okuda, the GOAT, is now on Atlanta. Uh, CJ Gardner Johnstein is on the Lions now. He is bringing something big to their team, obviously, their defensive backs. He was a really good player for the Eagles last year. Uh, Tracy Walker, their safety, is recovering from an uh, Achilles injury, so he's less than 100%. We got a lot of secondary and a lot of D-line action here, kind of less than 100%, which makes me feel like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hype going into games about, like, games being shootouts like we like this to be a shootout I kind of actually feel like this will be a shootout because of the injuries you think so yeah the uh they drafted Jack Campbell who's actually guts defensive uh, rookie of the year prediction mm-hmm. obviously I don't think the linebacker is going to make or break the shootout aspect but he's they, a really good run defender they do no? have young potential between him they drafted Brian Branch in the second round and you know if Aiden Hudson takes that year two jump 
But yeah, no, no matter what, they're still coming off a horrible year, and this isn't the health status they want to try and up that. But to be honest, I mean, we'll get into the over unders later. I, I don't think I think I disagree with the shootout aspect. Interesting. I just think every game that the Lions were in last year was a shootout. Like you could you could Agreed. book it that the Lions were going to get in a fifty point match with fucking everybody. Like even even the Patriots. If it was Patriots Lions <laughs> last year, I was like, yeah, that's probably hitting fifty. So so on that note though. I, you know, circling back to maybe the general storylines, I, I think everyone, all eyes are going to be on Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta, right? Like the rookies that they took earlier this year, are they going to be able to step in and be, you know, what the Lions need in their offense? Because I think a lot of what goes unsaid, where everyone likes to be like, okay, if Gibbs walks into DeAndre Swift's role, he's going to get 70 targets. If you remember the first half of last year, the Lions were trailing within the first quarter of every game and if you, if you narrow down Swift's receptions and targets to when they came, it was like two minutes left in every half. He would get like four or five catches on the last drive of every half. He was obviously the pass catching back, but they, it was stack pile on stack pile on stack pile of stats there. I don't think that's like a realistic hope for Gibbs. I do, I do think without like the weapons that they have in place, he can get a lot of catches tomorrow or tonight, I should say. But I, I think that's something that's not spoken about enough. And I, I'm interested to see how this passing game works outside of Amon Ross St. Brown because they don't really have any pieces besides Josh Reynolds, the GOAT. Marvin Jones is fucking old. Sam Laporte is a rookie. I don't know. All eyes will be on them. I just, I, I have a hard time feel, feeling like they're going to really step into Arrowhead first game for the Lions and like really show out here. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough place to step into, and you got Andy Reid all off season just thinking about Jared Goff and how he's going to stop him. We talk about Andy Reid being nice off a of bye. This is him being off bye after bye buys. after bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, X20, X Andy Reid. The most powerful Andy Reid you're going to get all year. It's a collab I want no part of if I'm the Detroit Lions. Exactly. I think, like, September Mahomes is also, like, he's already the GOAT, arguably, but, like, it's on a whole nother level for him. I'm excited to watch him, bro. It, it's just fun to watch Patrick Mahomes every time he steps on the field. Yeah. I think the Lions are really going to try and establish, not Gibbs to be, like, I think it's going to be a more even role on the ground than people think. Like, I don't think he's going to be John Drew Swift where he's just basically a pass catcher and that's it. Like, I think he's going to get a lot of groundwork. Maybe not early on. So, if you had to predict carries for this game between Montgomery and Gibbs, what combined? do you Combined? No, no, no. Like, split. Give me, like, a range for Gibbs, like, a range for Montgomery. I got my number. There's right and wrong answers here. Right. I'll tell you what they are. I'm thinking, like, 35, 65. 65. No, no, no. Like, numbers. Not oh. percentages. Like, how many carries yeah, does yeah, Gibbs yeah. walk away with and then Montgomery? I'm thinking, like, 12 and 20. Maybe maybe a little lower. Maybe that's w- 11 and 19. Yeah, that's that's way too high, 12 said, and 20. I was thinking 15 and 7. Really? I think no, I, I think they're going to try and run the hell out of the ball this game. I don't think they're going to be able to, though. Like, the 32 carries between their two backs is so – they have to be up semi-significantly to pull those numbers off. You think? I think that's the, what they're going to try and game plan the entire game. Yeah, but that goes out the window after, like, two drives. But You can game plan I w- for that. I was like, it's like, sure, our game plan is to beat Pat Mahomes. I <laughs> understand fun. that, but, like, just given no Chris Jones and maybe no Travis Kelsey, like – this is the time you can't pull shit off. You're right. When Travis Kelsey's not out there on the D-line, like, that's when, that's when well, you I'm run saying, the Well, I'm saying because the Chiefs will be off there. They might not score no, 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 quickly I, or right away, as you think, and the Lions might not trail right away, as you think. I think the 12-20 estimation is out of control. Really? Yeah. Okay. 12-20. What do you think it is? Way closer to what you said. I would say maybe, like, 9, nine Gibbs, 14 Montgomery, something like that. Wow, okay. Yeah. I think they're both probably in the 10 to 15 range with Montgomery on the higher side, Gibbs on the lower side. But I do think Gibbs ends up – probably being targeted on underdog is line is three and a half receptions, which Josh Norris on the underdog podcast was talking about. Like this is probably the lowest his line will be all year, which I think he'll probably be a perennial, like weekly four and a half guy on the, on the, uh, on the slate. Like, I think you'll be, you'll have to choose over under on four and a half pretty much all year for his reception numbers. I think he'll go over three and a half. I think he'll catch like four to five balls. I think what they'll probably do is start the game off trying to get him involved right away. Like I could see a, a for sure a screen pass on the first drive. I could, I could see it just to prove a point. Like, yeah, we drafted a running back, top 15. <laughs> yeah. What about it? We'll do yeah. it again. No, you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Everyone's like, bad pick. No, you. I think they get him ready early. Do you think the line I gave is... It's too high. Do you th- even... When I'm asking for the rest of the season, do you think that's a decent expectation? What was your line again? 11 and 19. Like, overall season, like his average for the year, he ends up averaging 11 carries a game. I think the problem is, well... That might be high for Gibbs, but just in total, you said 30 carries might be a lot for a Lions, who I think their defense is still probably, like, bottom, what? What would you say their defense is, like, bottom five defense? Lions? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, Close they're to. they're improved. All right, so I'm looking at last year. Jamal Williams hit 21, 2, 
three times. DeAndre Swift hit 11 three times. So that's kind of where I'm going off of it. That's fair. For your running backs to hit those numbers, like you, you have to be a team that, one, runs the ball a ton and also has control of the game clock. That's what I mean. But I don't, don't, I don't think, think the Lions have the luxury of being able to run no. it with their shitty defense. I could see that ratio being correct, but the volume is just too high. I think I'm too caught up on where I think they want to be. Like, I think that's yeah. what I, they wish they could be, but I think you're right. that I'm just, that's, even if they want it, they can't. Yeah, well, I do think what, what might be more interesting to see is, like, everyone's kind of writing off Montgomery as a pass catcher, too. But he's, he's not bad at that side of the game. No. Like, I do wonder if they leave him on the field for first and second downs because he can catch the ball, unlike Jamal Williams, where he was, like, super one-dimensional. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, when you're running an offense, it, it benefits you to not be so transparent what you're doing. Like, you don't want to have, when it's Montgomery on the field, we're running it. When Gibbs is on the field, we're throwing it. But, you know, sometimes teams act stupidly like that. But I think that's probably do, why but. they went out and gave Montgomery, well, they gave him like 18, 20 million so that they weren't one-dimensional when, sure. like, the Jamal Williams was on the field. Yeah, that's fair. So that's what I think. Maybe they use two running back sets. Like, without, with, without Jameson Williams, like, maybe they use two running backs. Maybe they use Gibbs in the slot as a guy. Because think about the makeup of their team. If they use Amon Ra on the outside at all, which I don't know, maybe he'll be a slot, maybe he's outside. But, like, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather... If you're doing three wide receivers, I'd almost prefer if I'm a team going Montgomery in the backfield, Amara on the outside, Josh Reynolds, and then like Gibbs in the slot. Let him kind of like run amok in the middle of the field. They really just don't have a passing offense. No, they really don't. It's kind of bad like, when you look you, at it. You saying Gibbs should run the slot is like, damn, their passing offense is yeah. weak. It's, it's tough because you're like, oh, Goff had such a good year last year. And it's like, he could have even better because Montgomery scored 98 touchdowns on the goal line. And then you're like, Dude, how? Williams. But I, I, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Like, the underlying stories people are not talking about enough is like the reason their numbers were pumped up so much is because they got down so quickly every single week and they had nothing to do but just throw the ball 45 times a game. If they're a good team, if they're actually as good as people expect them to be this year, they're going to be a much more balanced offense. And that's why I'm, like, skeptical about the Goff season-long lines. So I'm skeptical about, like, a lot of the upside that people think that they have on offense. I think they'd be a better team, and their offense statistically comes down. I wonder what the odds are for Lions to miss playoffs. I'm really, we're really talking myself into, like, the Lions just being we're out. a super disappointing team. Do they go 0-17? That'd be a good bet, though. To miss like playoffs, straight up, yeah. I mean, if they're, it's, they're it's favorites to win their division, yeah. so I feel like you they're get like pretty minus one thirty to win their. Or, or I, they're probably not even favorite favorites, though. They're probably nah, just the I think they're odds. like plus one thirty, plus one forty to win their division. Plus one thirty to win their division, probably like minus four eighty to miss the playoffs or some shit like that. <laughs> they do, that doesn't work like that. Nah. Yeah, they're not going to give you good odds. They're not going to give you good odds on anything. If they're, but if they're favored, if they're, if they're favored to win their division. It's yeah. going to be like, you're going to get more money. You're going to get longer odds. <laughs> if you're favored to make the playoffs, you're going to make more to pick you're them You're favored to make the playoffs, and you're also favored <laughs> to not make the playoffs. That's how fucking Vegas works, bro. They don't give you it good feels like juicy it. odds it on anything. Feels Tony, like pull it. up the odds. we got to take this. <laughs> All oh, right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, let me pull that up. Let's talk about uh, another absolute <laughs> fucking mess on the other side of the ball. Kansas City. Let, let's uh, assume, I mean, if Travis Kelsey plays, obviously he's, he's the fucking guy there, but... The wide receiver core, we were talking about it in the last video that we filmed on the couch over there before, but, like, you could name <laughs> everyone eight different players that I would believe would lead the team in passing, right? It's like starting in the backfield with McKinnon. Then you work over to the tight ends, like, Noah Gray could lead the team in passing. If Kelsey plays, he could lead the team in passing. Then you have Richie James, Sky Moore, Kadarius Toney, Justin Ross, Justin Watson, fucking MVS who's going to run the most routes on that team I don't know I probably missed like two or three other players but it's an insane amount of collect uh, weapons that like who who are we starting here let's kind of move down to your rankings I suppose yeah I mean if you look at the wide receivers of Monroe was a clear one to me the starters is like KT and Sky Moore that's my wide receiver twos and three in the weeks I don't think anyone's relevant well, let's not like rank them in terms of like who's playing in the game we need we need like rankings in terms of where you have them overall like I'm on Raza, a clear wide receiver one this week like yeah. you're, you're throwing them in your lineup anywhere you have them okay but you have Kadarius Tony Sky Moore all the other wide receivers are any of them like worth starting anywhere that's what I'm saying I think this early on like unless you somehow have the team that's got like Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor because you wanted to play risky and you need someone to fill that spot in the meantime I don't think unless you're in a super deep league these aren't guys that have must starts for me Right now, especially now, if Kelsey's out, that could change things. Like, you might want to be tempted by the KT Sky more. If I had to rank them, I think right now they're sitting in the 40s for me amongst my all wide receivers. KT, I love as a player. You know I'm biased towards You take them. KT over Sky more. Yeah. There's just, 
In my eyes, there's no him being out of practice for the last month and a half. I think he's more likely to run eleven routes this game. I just look. You know how when they first got him last year, and he was like playing on eight snaps. That I feel like they're both like that though. Like if you look at even Sky Moore in the playoffs, like the most recent info we have, he had like fucking less than fifty yards through four games or whatever it was. Like neither of them have great. I'm not starting either of these guys unless it's like you absolutely need to. I'd be okay starting Sky Moore. Like Sky Moore for me, yeah. I I would throw him in. Not like I I don't want to do my wide receiver too, but if I'm in a deeper league. You know, PPR, he's my wide receiver three or, like, flex or second flex. I'm okay with it. He's probably ranked in the wide receiver four range for me. There's no chance. There's no chance that, that KT is going in my lineup, though. I just have bad vibes written all over that. I mean, you miss that much practice time, and then they're just like, oh, he's ready to go. It's like, no. Like, no, no, no you. That's 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 the way <laughs> I, I feel. I just think he's just that type of guy. Just I don't know, fucking dude. throw him in there. Okay, yeah, I would agree. They're both in the 40s. I would put him at wide receiver fours for me. I don't think any other chief wide receiver is relevant enough to say start by any means unless you are just a Justin Ross homer or you think Richie James, it's his time to shine. There's just no other wide receiver in that room I'm biting off of, not even MBS, who's a vet, I guess, in that wide receiver room. Lions wide receiver is not touching them. The running backs, though? Yeah, let's talk running backs. So uh, Gibbs and Monty, Pacheco, McKinnon, and Sneaky Clyde. I think Sneaky Clyde. Sneaky Freaky one. Clyde. He's he's here for week one, and then he bounces. On the but list. I like straight up. No, I would never start him this week. But I'm I'm telling you, he's going to start for them. He's going to start. I for think them. so too. I think he's the Sammy Watkins of running backs. Yeah, that's Ooh, a great fucking pull. That's good. He's great coming out tomorrow. Definitely getting six goal line carries, two touchdowns, never to be heard from again. So let, let's say half PPR leagues, you're going Gibbs over Monty. Yes. Are we brainwashed by best ball? I think I am bad. Yeah, because I, I like. Legitimately like best ball more than redraft leagues. That's where a lot of my time is spent. That's kind of on me to not balance it better. But I think I'm completely brainwashed. Because Gibbs, at this point, Gibbs and Monty are not even within like five tiers of each other. No, not But if I, had, if I had not done one draft best ball this offseason and I just objectively looked at everything starting now, I don't think I'd look at it that way. I'd be like, David Montgomery, he signed a $20 million contract. He's taking Jamal Williams' spot who just ran for 20 fucking touchdowns last year. In a half PPR league, like, Gibbs can catch six balls. That's worth three fucking points. You know what I mean? If he's not going to get in from the goal line, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, would, I would probably – I think I'm – I think I've been sucked in enough to the, to the echo chamber of everything that I would play Gibbs over Monty. But with, like, Chris Jones out, I feel like Monty's a good play too. I would have both of them ranked within my top 24 for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and to me, it is pretty much 50-50. To be honest, the tiebreaker for me was I, I looked into underdog and their lines and Gibbs was projected more, and I thought – Vegas is a little bit sharper than I'm going to be. I'm going to give Gibbs the nod there. That was kind of my logic. They were very close. Pacheco, I don't. I just hate that. You know, I'm not big on McKinnon. I know that's kind of your guys, this guy this season. He's a he's a best ball, another best ball guy yeah. for me. Especially like, I mean, in a regular half PPR league, it's nearly impossible to predict when to actually put him into your lineup unless one of the other guys gets hurt. Like when Ceh was hurt at the end of the last year, is you know, it was like Pacheco's in for this, mm-hmm. McKinnon's in for this. So you knew you're getting a heavy dosage of both of them. But Pacheco is far behind the other, the Detroit running back. Again, he's another dude who missed a lot of this summer too, which opened the door for a dude like Clyde to kind of like get in here. And even if Clyde's not like doing a, a ton, he'll get like six, eight touches, which goes a long way for a dude like Pacheco or McKinnon who were getting 10 touches to begin with, you know? So it eats into that. Chiefs don't run the ball on the goal line. Like I, I, I would, I guess I would play. I don't even know if I'd play any of the Kansas City running backs, to be honest. I think this is a wait and see for me to see how the backfield splits up. I don't know. I'm getting a lot of, like, DMs, like, can you rate my team? Can you rate my team? And a lot of screenshots have Pacheco, like, as their RB2. Like, he's getting started no matter what in a shit ton of leagues. Jeez. I don't think he should be in that situation. You should not have been. You <laughs> should not have been a lot of him. spots, dude. You should, you should have been drafting Pacheco in an area where it's I don't need to start him. Yeah. If you're drafting him – as your RB2, like, you you punted on running backs too hard. Well, when the summer started, he was, like, an early seventh. He was, like, 7'1", 7'2", 7'3", in that range. He was, like, in the DeAndre Swift range. And then he slowly started creeping back as he missed more time. And I think by the time, like, last week rolled around when best ball drafts were kind of wrapping up, he went in that, like, Brian Robinson range, like, end of ninth round, Cleo Herbert range, where I'd rather have those guys over him in a heartbeat because I know what their roles are going to be. And I, and I feel like I know what Pacheco's role is going to be. He's coming off a big rookie year, but – and didn't catch passes, and, and the offense overall just worries. Maybe Kelsey being out, though, makes it a little bit more predictable on the goal line. 
Maybe I'm just reaching for shit here. I don't they, know. like, stop trying to be so creative, and they're just like, you know what? What if we just run it up <laughs> yeah. the gut? What if we just play normal tube? football? Yeah. yeah. Unlikely. We, Extremely unlikely. We mentioned this a few days ago. The Chiefs, though, it's so, like, even if you have a defined role, it's always going to the hot hand. Like, if you lose yeah. any momentum, you have one bad game, or you miss two weeks due to injury, like, your job could be taken that quickly in the Chiefs' backfield. Yeah, they're they're so versatile on offense. Andy Reid's just so smart. And speaking of that, like, if Kelsey misses time, so Noah Gray is projected to be the guy. But, like, I don't even know if I would feel confident that I would choose him to score a touchdown over, like, Blake Bell. Like, mm-hmm. Blake Bell, I don't think Jody Fortin's on the team, which is, like, low-key kind of big for Noah Gray because he's another dude that would randomly score on the goal line for no reason. But I don't feel good about Noah Gray. No, I definitely don't. I don't, I don't think this is a situation like Dallas where it's, like, Dalton Schultz leaves so we feel good about Ferguson because we know the tight end role in Dallas is good. I think the Chiefs use Travis Kelsey because Travis Kelsey's a fucking baller. I don't think it's like we're going to force a tight end into the system or we have a system where, like, the tight end always eats. I, <laughs> I, I think Noah Gray, at the end of the day, has to be good enough to earn targets. And maybe this guy has a future, but I don't think we're at the point where we're going to anoint Noah Gray as, like, a must-use piece in any offense. Yeah, I mean, with with their offense just being so unpredictable, the guy has 35 catches between two years. It's actually not a terrible sophomore year, given Kelsey plays in front of him, obviously. Pretty athletic dude, uh, 6'3", 240, so definitely that, like, in-line, slottish kind of tight end, 4'6", 740, so sub 4'7". Not a bad athlete, but I, I saw a lot of fab being thrown down on him last night in a lot of leagues, and I just could probably name 20 tight ends I'd rather start over him in week one. I find that to be so crazy because I think in most leagues, unless you're like, even in tight end premiums, I don't I don't think this like applies, but in, you know, like some if you're of a Kelsey my, like, owner, home, you're probably panicking. You're like, I need his Sure, but I, I feel like in a lot of home leagues too, you have guys like Sam Laporta, who we just talked about, and like Jake Ferguson... And maybe even, like, a guy like Tyler Higby. Maybe not Higby. But maybe no, that's aggressive. I mean, with like, Cup out, yeah, Higby will be But, like, I, th- I feel like those guys are also sitting on the wire. And I'd rather pivot to those guys than go with Noah Gray just because you had Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't see, like, okay, Gray could score on the goal line. That could end up happening. But as you, I don't see him going for more than, like, 35 fucking receiving yards. You know what I mean? So, you, like, need the touchdown for him to pay off any sort of line. Do they have lines for him up on underdog right now? I don't think I, so. No. Yeah, it, is, it, it feels weird throwing Fab on Noah on Noah Gray because his floor is that he's not even the fucking tight end that they pivot to. That and you're like spending that money for one week, like at most. Like we all expect, like in t- unless the Kelsey has like serious news we don't know about, you're paying for one week, pretty unless much. Unless Noah Gray does so much <laughs> against the Lions <laughs> that the Chiefs just have to give him the number one <laughs> role over Kelsey. Chiefs just gonna drop Travis Kelsey. Yeah, <laughs> we, we <laughs> Noah Gray does so much he wipes away like the past eight years of Travis Kelsey. <laughs> We mentioned whoever has a hot hand, Noah That's Gray, <laughs> could get some momentum going. <laughs> Snow Put Travis Noah Gray in the backfield. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Noah Gray highlights. <laughs> All right, let's move to some underdog slips. And the first one y'all got to know about is obviously the Patrick Mahomes free square. 0.5 yards. Completes one pass to Noah Gray. And it's it's curtains. That's it for everybody. We're all winners on underdog. If you're new to underdog, make sure you hit that promo code BDGE. They'll hit you with a 100% deposit. So you throw down 10, use the code. You'll have 20. Throw it on Patrick Mahomes' 0.5 yards. You'll have 40. You see how this shit starts to multiply? So I have Mahomes free square, and then I hit the Josh Reynolds square, okay? So when I originally hit it, it was at 25 and a half. It since has dropped to 22 and a half, and now it's back up to 23 and a half, but I'll take it. When I think of Josh Reynolds, I look at the offense. They got no one to pass the ball to outside of Amon Ra and Jameer Gibbs. He's kind of their downfield guy. He had a nice run last year. And one of the stats I found was in the 11 games that he played over 55% of the snaps, he hit this over 8 of the 11 times. So we're talking about like 75% of the time. The other wide receivers they have on the roster, and a lot of times he didn't hit that was because DJ Chark was kind of taking over as a downfield number two there. Jameson Williams is obviously out. They re-signed Marvin Jones, who's like 40 years old at this point. He's probably not actually like a part of their game plan. You got Sam Laporta, who's a rookie at tight end. He was doing a lot of this damage last year when DJ Hawkinson was there. So I just feel like Reynolds is a sneaky dude who's going to be way too involved like you don't want Josh Reynolds to be your guy but he'll be involved in this Lions offense that I again I think it's going to be at least somewhat of a shootout so Reynolds catches two balls he's hitting the over here so I really like the Reynolds over 23 and a half receiving yards yeah the more the more you talk about it, I really do like the play even I'm though I'm fucking I sucking you in about on, the, on the J on the J Ray train I'm trailing it hell yeah let's go <laughs> couldn't disagree more but I'm in <laughs> I'm so in all right what else we got you want to rip this yours more 
Just Sky Moore. Sky Moore. Sky's the limit. So I originally had Sky Moore under 46 and a half. I don't think this 44 is going to break me. But the reason I like is under, A, he didn't he did it one time last year. He didn't start every game, but he played in every game. 16 games, 44 yards, only do it one time. Not impressive. And this was at 36 and a half before the Kelsey news. It's jumped up since then. We still think there's a good chance Kelsey plays. So I think right now this number is a little inflated. The moment he's announced he's still in the game, this is going to go back down to reality. It's probably going to be sub 40 again. I don't know if you think that seven-yard difference, if this goes from 44 and a half to 37 and a half, is a steal deal. But every yard counts when we're talking about 50 and below. I think it's pretty good value, especially once Kelsey gets announced. I, I really, really like it. Yeah, with more, it kind of goes back to just the carousel at wide receivers for yeah. KC again. It's like, we're going to look back Friday morning. We're going to read write-ups, and it's going to be like, Justin Watson and MVS played the most snaps for Kansas City <laughs> wide receivers. Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony both played 18 snaps or some bullshit like that. So it's like all the fluff pieces throughout the offseason of these guys getting more more chances, getting bigger roles. It just goes out the, out the window in week one. I feel like Mahomes just wants to play with dudes that he knows about, that he feels comfortable throwing the ball to, and that's kind of it. So yeah. I, I would side with the lower as well there. And I, and I, we've been on Sky Moore all season, off season, so I'm not like fading him for the year. I just think right now it's like we've already given him that wide receiver one role, and it's just he hasn't earned it fully yet. Yeah. I'm trying to find a line that I feel better about than this. I'm trying to find <laughs> one that I have more conviction about. But I think at the end of the day, the thing I feel best about is just fading Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, we've been talking about the hot hand. It feels like coming into the season, things have kind of cooled off for him. A lot of bad vibes surrounding Isaiah Pacheco. And 10.5 fantasy points for him in this game seems a little high. His projection for his total yards is only 60. So we're kind of assuming that he's going to find the end zone. I think there's a decent chance that even if he does fuck around and get in the end zone and... Maybe it's like a goal line carry. I, I don't know if he's going to be worked in so much that he could. I think there's still a chance he scores a touchdown and goes under 10 fans. Like 30 points. yards in a touchdown. Right. I think there's a lot of outs here. Like, there's no way he hits that number by yardage itself, in my Exactly. Opinion. And he's not going to do it through the air either. It's not like he's going to catch five passes. Dude doesn't catch anything. So, I like it. I mean, and, and yeah, week one is the one week where Clyde would take some goal line work if it does happen at all this year. Yeah, he's coming off of, uh, is it shoulder or wrist or some arm it's like injury. a hand. A hand, hand injury. injury. Some bullshit, yeah. Just bad vibes surrounding Isaiah Pacheco. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling this 10 points. I think that's a little too high. Oh, look at that. Sky went up. That's better value. Huge. Sky just went up? Real time, Sky Moore to 45 and a half. Else he must be out. Do we have like two more that we like that we want to throw in here that you feel good about? I mean, uh, we, we got our slip. I mean, we only need do one we just more keep it? because of Mahomes. No, we're good. Why do we need one more? If we want to do five, max it out. Max it out. We went oh, 20X. I, already, I already took my Mahomes. I did too. I actually paired it up with something that they don't even have on the board anymore. Don't that's how, that's how you know it was a sharp, <laughs> sharp play. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll leave you with that slip. We've got Sky Moore lower than 45 and a half receiving yards. We've got Isaiah Pacheco lower than 10.45 fantasy points. We've got Josh the Goat Reynolds higher than 23 and a half receiving yards. And of course, the Patrick Mahomes free square 0.5 total yards. Which one of us are going to chalk this? Get on underdog. We're all, we probably whiff on <laughs> We go over three. Trail us. Fade us. Do whatever the fuck you want. Maybe take bits and pieces of it. Build your own slip. Send us the slip. Join our Discord. Show us what you got in there. But make sure you use promo code if you're not an underdog yet. BDGE, and they will double what you got. All right, so there's our first Thursday Night Football preview. Any, anything else we want to throw out there? What do we need to improve upon? Let's have a self-reflection session right now. We need to, I'm looking at you. I already know. I'm looking we, at you. We need to. I'm looking at you. We need to hit more bets. We have. We're o for o, o right now, and I already know that we we need to hit more. You know what we need to do? We also need to do our predictions because we did not actually do that. Our predictions for the game. For the game, yeah. correct. Uh, I'll run through this quickly. I've got Casey on the money line. I've got Casey minus five and a half. Although I did see it at minus four and a half on another book, so hopefully that I, I drops think it's, down. I think it's completely four and a half now. Okay, so we were doing this through Fanduel and might have dropped down. So whatever it is, four and a half, five and a half, fucking ten and a half. I'm taking Casey Chiefs to the dome over fifty two and a half. Let's shoot this motherfucker out yeah i'm with you on the money line the spread i feel like i would take up to six and a half like i think if it's 
under once or within a touchdown, I would definitely take the Chiefs. I got the under again. I'm, I'm guess I'm living or dying on this. You're just you're on 46 this, carries yeah, from the Lions. Run yeah. game down their throats. Lions are eating. Justin the Jackson will take a few carries <laughs> to just, fuck it. Jared Goff, how much? What are your wheels looking like? <laughs> yeah. Noah Gray in the backfield for the Chiefs. Everyone's running <laughs> in this kickoff for Thursday night football. Okay. I'm taking the under. All right, uh, I'm gonna take the Chiefs laying the points four and a half. I do think it's an accurate come down with the with the Kelsey news but I just think Andy Reid first week of the season he's gonna find a way to get it done like I just can't imagine the Chiefs drop in this game NFL season's back are we really taking an under here two electric offenses like I'm just not doing it I don't care what the sharp money says I don't care what the analytics say like we remember just, Goff versus the Chiefs the last time they had yeah. Monday Night Football <laughs> 240 yeah, points yeah, yeah exactly there's just no shot in hell I, I don't care who says what about anything like it's I'm glad <laughs> football's back <laughs> care about nothing Glad football's back until tomorrow night and then i'm sick of it yeah when when my over bet loses i'll be so out on the nfl season <laughs> but right now i'm in on the nfl season that means we're taking the over to kick off the season all right that's it we wrap there we love you subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video we'll be doing this every single thursday for the rest of our lives